Welcome everybody, it's me, Aaron the Artist. This video is going to be a style study of My Hero Academia and the artist of the series, Kohei Horikoshi. And what I mean by a style study is I'm going to be taking a careful look at the My Hero art style. I'm going to pick it apart and see what makes it tick. And then I'm going to use that information to see if I can draw my own original character in that same style. So hopefully you'll be able to learn plenty from this. Now I should say before we get started that I'm just focusing on the character art here. I'm not going to pay too much attention to the backgrounds. Okay, so let's get started by looking at the anatomy and the proportions in these characters. The first thing to say about anatomy and proportions is that it's generally very simplified. Horikoshi often tries to get away with as little as possible, using just a few lines in place of very complicated shapes. If we were to zoom in on Bakugo's body here, for example, you can see that we have a little bit of anatomy being drawn in here. You can see some of the shoulder and the tricep, but it's really only suggested rather than fully rendered. You get a couple of lines that convey the key information so that Bakugo looks like he's got decent muscles. But if you look at some of these other images where it isn't as important to show that a character is muscular, you don't get anywhere near as much detail. In fact, Sometimes the whole arm is described just with two lines. The same thing happens if we take a look at the face. In fact, I think the simplification is even more obvious if we look at the character's faces. If we look at Kyoko's face, for example, you can see that her whole face is drawn with four or five lines, and there are just enough details to set her face apart from other people. It can often be difficult to figure out just how simplified things are getting when you get used to looking at the style. So I think it can be helpful if you compare the My Hero art style to some more detailed manga out there. So I'm just going to take a moment here to pause and to show you guys a comparison between My Hero Academia and some more complicated manga such as Berserk and Vinland Saga. As you can see, there's quite a big difference between those three. However, I think my hero is probably much closer in anatomy and proportions to something like Dragon Ball than it is to either of these shows. On top of the simplification, I've also noticed that my hero will very frequently break the proportion rules if it suits the character. For example, a lot of the characters will very often have almost no space in between their two eyes. When you draw a realistic human face, a good rule of thumb is to keep a one eye distance in between the eyes so that the eyes are properly spaced out from one another. And even in most anime and manga, that rule tends to get respected, even when you make the eyes bigger. When you look at My Hero Aka, however, you often get characters with very, very little spaces in between their eyes. But when you look at the My Hero art style, you can often see individual teeth and even the gums. When these characters open their mouths, you get real believable ugly shouting, not just the pretty and stylized anime shouting that's so common these days. The very last thing that's worth mentioning when it comes to the anatomy and the proportions are the hands. Quite often, you'll see much bigger hands in My Hero than you would expect them to realistically be. But on top of that, they have this very solid boxish look, which I think happens because of the number of straight lines that Horikoshi uses in drawing hands. Not only do they have this very distinctive character about them, but you also see those hands all over the place in these very unusual poses. You get to see Horikoshi drawing dynamic hands at almost every chance that he gets. Of course, those wild hands aren't in every panel, and they're not in every scene. But the My Hero characters emote with their hands just constantly. They say that a lot of people in real life talk with their hands, and I think that's especially the case with the characters in My Hero Aka. In terms of the colour and the shading, there's not that much to say on the anime side of things. It's pretty much your standard cell shading using one base colour and one shadow colour. But in the manga, you get something much more interesting, because you really see the Western influence on the series. Western comics like Batman and X-Men are well known for those iconic black shadows all over the place. 
and My Hero has that same exact look. You'll see this most obviously in All Might, because he's designed in just about every way to be a western superhero. But you can see those black shadows all over the place, in the hair, in the clothes, in the muscles, on every character. Outside of that, you get two other tones in the manga. The white of the page, and something like a 50% grey, which is used in quite a few different ways. Sometimes it's a clothing colour, other times it's a mid-tone for the hair, and other times it's used to silhouette the whole character against the background. Alright, let's talk about what I think is the most important aspect of my hero, the character design. A lot of these characters take their cues from Western Might is essentially a parody of Superman, Froppy is constantly running around like Spider-Man, and Uraraka looks uncomfortably like a Powerpuff Girl. That aside, all of the characters are super distinctive and unique in the show, and you don't get any same face syndrome at all, unlike, for example, Sword Art Online where a lot of the characters use the same face with different hairstyles just pasted on. What really makes these characters work though, is that every line that Horikoshi puts into each design says something about the character's personality. There's a pretty easy illustration of this if we take a look at the character's eye. The soft, friendly characters always have round eyes, and more aggressive or evil characters tend to have more triangular eyes. But there's a lot more to it than that. If you take a look at Uraraka here, for example, She's a sweet, friendly, girl-next-door type that we're meant to root for right from the very start of the show. And look at her character design. It's full of the safest, friendliest shape. Circles. You can see all the circles here all over her design, and even where we get boxes instead of circles, all the corners are rounded off, so that there's not a single sharp edge in her design. Now let's compare her with Bakugo, who has so many spikes in his design you'd think he was based on a cactus. His eyes, his hair, his hero costume, the folds of his clothing, it's all made of spikes. And that makes him feel like, well, just what he is. He's aggressive and he's dangerous. Okay, it's time to get drawing. What I'm going to be doing here is drawing my original character, Talia, in the My Hero style. You can see here to the left two earlier attempts I made at drawing her, but I didn't really like them. The top one is just way too bold for the My Hero style. The shading is too strong, the line art's way too thick. I did like that hand that I drew in there, but it's just way too bold in general. And although the style that we're going for can be pretty bold in the manga, I wanted this portrait of Talia to look a little bit more like the anime, which has much softer lines. The portrait in the bottom left is better, and I played around with the look that you see in some of the My Hero characters where the eyes are slightly too big. For example, Deku. But I wasn't too happy with how that turned out. So, in my new sketch you can see that I'm building Talia's whole design out of these kind of curved triangle shapes. Her eyes, her face shape, the hair clumps, the jacket, the ears. Everything is basically a triangle, but one with rounded edges. I'm doing that because I think Talia is in her heart a soft and friendly character, but she has a seriously hard life, and it's given her a bit of a harsher edge. There wasn't that much special to say about the line art, but the one thing worth pointing out is that I'm putting in this black shadow under her chin, which you see often in the My Hero anime. Now it's a little tough to fit Talia's colour scheme into the style exactly. A lot of My Hero characters have one defining colour, like Deku is green, Uraraka is pink, Eraser is black, but I don't think Talia really has a single colour like that. She's got bright red hair, and then this purple jacket. I did try off camera with just making the jacket grey or black, and you see me even trying red eyes here, but it just didn't feel right to me. So I've had to compromise a bit on the My Hero style with this part. Not compromising on the shading though. The My Hero shading is a kind of cell shading with all hard edges. Each surface is made up of a base colour and one shadow colour. You occasionally get a highlight colour as well. 
but I've noticed that that's only really with dark hair specifically. I used to struggle a lot with cell shading when it comes to hair, because I was never sure where to put the shadows, but it turns out that it doesn't really matter that much. What matters is that you can make some interesting looking shapes that flow together nicely. There isn't really a right way to do it. Okay, here's the third and final version. I got pretty close to the anime style with this one, but next I'm going to try to draw Talia's entire character design, including designing her hero costume. All the heroes in the manga have their own unique hero costumes that are created to fit nicely with their quirk or superpower, and I thought it'd be interesting to do that with Talia, so that she fits into the My Hero world. But I wanted to do that and keep a lot of the elements from her original design. And that's tricky because Talia isn't a superhero in her original design. She's just a girl that happens to have some psychic abilities. In her original design, she wears her father's long oversized jacket, and it almost buries her body. But I didn't think that would look right here. So what I ended up doing is keeping the upper part of the jacket and the sleeves, and making the rest of her design more agile. And so you can see the rest of the costume is built similar to Uraraka's, a sort of skin-tight design that keeps her as agile as possible. Anyway, I wanted this drawing to be more like the manga than the anime, and the manga uses this three-tone technique for characters. You typically see black, white, and mid-tone. Deciding what should be each tone is much trickier than I really thought it would be. To finish off the illustration, I decided to make a character sheet like you sometimes see in the My Hero manga or in the anime ad breaks, where you've got illustrations of the character together with their name and some basic information about them. And there you have it. Talia as a My Hero Aka superhero. She ended up being a lot older than I usually draw her, but that's okay. I kind of like the idea of her as one of the academy students close to graduating. So there we have it. I hope this helps you out with the My Hero art style. If you make your own hero, tag me on Instagram or on Twitter so I can see it. Till next time, do all of the things and have a nice day.